Today I'm going to show you a simple setup for a product shot with a limbo black background. I'm using my satchel for the product, but these techniques can be used for virtually any product of any size. Your techniques will depend on the equipment and space you have access to, but at least this will give you a couple ideas. Here's the setup in a studio that's 30 feet wide. The key light is an Airy 1K Fresnel with a Chimera softbox. It's flooded out all the way, so it's been softened quite a bit and raised almost as high as it will go, angling down at about a 45 degree angle. Check the shadows if you're going to have a person in the scene handling or operating the product, like I did with this shoot recently. You may need to adjust the position of the key light, but the softer the light, the softer the shadow. The backlight is an Airy 650, full flood on a dimmer set to 50%. If you don't have a dimmer, you can shoot it through a silk or other diffusion. If you hang the backlight from the ceiling, you can put it 180 degrees from the key light. But when it's on the floor, I like to put it on the same side as the key light, so it's just out of the edge of frame. The wide shot camera is positioned directly at the corner of the product, very close to the key light. Just like with architecture, you should always try to shoot objects from their corner because that creates a more three-dimensional image than shooting a flat surface. The close-up camera is just to the left of the wide shot camera, and I like to put it on a slider so I can easily adjust its position. If you don't have two cameras, you can simply shoot the product or the process twice with different framings. The limbo set is used so the product is not shown in any particular environment, and to help create that look, you'll definitely need C-stands and flags. Cut the top of the key light off the floor and backdrop, without taking the light off the product, of course. The shadow from the flag gets sharper as you move the flag away from the light, so sometimes it's difficult to get a super sharp cut because the flag ends up in the shot. If you want to take the light off the table and floor on either side of the product, then of course you'll need more than the two flags and two C-stands I'm using here. So if we set that flag on the left and then take it off the right as well, you can really isolate the product in a pool of light. You can also achieve this effect to some extent by using the vignette feature on the Lumetri filter in Adobe Premiere. And here's what that can look like. If you want to learn more about that, I'm sure there's a tutorial out there somewhere. For the close-up shot, you can see how flagging the light off the table and the floor can make a big difference. The backlight is flagged off the bottom, keeping light off the floor. Anything spilling over the top is not in the shot, so don't worry about it. I also put black wrap on the side barn door of the backlight to keep the light out of the camera lens. Black wrap is a heavy-duty aluminum foil material that's very malleable and really great to have for keeping light from spilling where you don't want it. One item I suggest you have is a Lazy Susan. Depending on the size of the product, it's really nice to be able to spin the product around, especially if it has shiny pieces that can pick up a glint from the lights. Until next time, look for more video blogs at bigsley.com.